All right. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Welcome back to Tuesday Training, folks. All right. New Tuesday, new topic. We are talking today all about the PRV cycle. What is the PRV cycle? All right. So this is something that I've been working on. Um, so you will be hearing this term from me uh, going forward in a lot of my trainings and in my sessions, things like that. So um, when I refer to the PRV cycle, it is truly just that. It is a cycle, friends. Um, I want you to really picture it. And again, I'm gonna have I'm gonna have more prettier things for you to look at, but for today, um, I just want you to picture a circle, right? Because honestly, that is how you are going to be able to remain consistent and remain present in your business and continue building your PRV week after week, month after month, season after season, okay? That is the goal, right? Remember, we don't have competition between each other. We only have competition between ourselves. So it, like it's me against me every single month, right? All I am trying to do every single month is beat my PRV, beat my sponsoring from last month. Um, that is all I really need to worry about at the end of the day. Do I have a team? Yes. And there's other leadership stuff that I do in between there. But at the end of the day, this is my business. And the very first piece of your business is the one thing that you have control over. And that is your personal sales right? We can't make our teams get out there and work their businesses. They may or may not want to. They may or may not have things going on, right? We can't control what others do. We can only control what we are doing. And what we are doing is we are working on our personal sales each and every month because it's only with personal sales that this whole business really remains a business. We have to be consistently having conversations. We have to be working every single month to be talking to new people, whether that's through social media, whether that's in person, whether it's through booking parties, all of those things are things that are gonna lead us to new people that we can influence in our business, right? And when I mean influence, I'm, I'm meaning like your reach, right? Your circle of influence, right? Just like when you very first started, um, I know for me personally, when I, I'm onboarding new team members. I tell people to really zero in on like their first 20 people, write down the names of the 20 people that they know that they can kind of start out with. Um, you may have heard of like making a list of 100. For me, 100 was just completely overwhelming. I never did it, never did it. Um, I remember trying to do it time after time again and i just i i couldn't i couldn't i got lost and and i wasn't able to get it done and I, so i thought maybe i need to scale this back right if it's not working for me it may not work for others as well so that's why i personally recommend with a list of 20 and then revising that list of 20 as you go and so we're going to talk about that as we talk about the prv cycle so there are four pieces to our PRV cycle, okay? Four things make the world go round when it comes to PRV. The first thing is to create the cycle, all right? The very first thing, we gotta create the cycle, right? We gotta start. We have to have a starting point. Number two, we have to work. If you are here, if you are here because you think this business literally dropped in my lap, or you are here because you thought this was going to be a get rich quick kind of a thing. I hate to be the one to burst your bubble right now. That is not the way it works. We have to put in work and effort to be able to make this a business. Number three is consistency. Keep saying at some point it's going to, it's going to become a tattoo. Consistency, consistency. Number four, repeat. I know, right? Right? Okay. All right. So here's how we're going to really create our cycle. Um, the very first thing when we are creating our cycle is you need to be wherever you're at in your business, right? If you are just starting out, you don't have any customers yet, obviously you're going to create customers, right? So that's where that list of 100 or what I really try and push is a list of 20. And then when you've exhausted that list of 20, making a new list of 20. Again, for me, it's more 
it's easily digestible in those smaller pieces rather than sitting down with 100 blank spaces it just it literally just consumed me and i wasn't able to get through it but when i actually broke it down into something that i could actually do that's when it was able to work for me okay so if you if you were completely different and your brain runs differently than mine does and you're like hey i can sit down and make a list of 100 then by all means make a list of 100 and start from there okay but if you're more like me, take a bite-sized piece off of that, go down to 20, maybe 25, right? And start there. These are the people that we are going to be calling your circle of influence, right? These are the people that you either know, right? Whether you know them because you've been friends for years, whether you know them from just social media, maybe you've never met them in person. I have a lot of friends that I have never met in person, or maybe I've only met once and taken a quick selfie with them in person, right? So like since they've been the reunion or at a world tour or something like that. But that's okay, right? Those are still people that are within your circle of influence. We also are going to have people that maybe you've worked with, maybe are friends with your kids and, you know, so on and so forth, right? It's your mom's best friends. Uh, that's kind of where we're, we're leading things, right? So you're going to start with that circle of influence and you're really going to look at those 20 people. Now, I am not going to be somebody who is going to tell you to hound your people or your circle of influence and sit there and constantly rely on those people to build your business for you. Some of those people might, okay? Not going to lie. I do have some people that are within my circle of influence, right? Those people who are most close to me, um, who I have a relationship with right outside of business, really, um, who who really are just great customers and they just love Sensi and that's how they've been. I've also had people in that circle of influence who loved it so much. They're like, screw it. I just want to hit join and I want to do this with you. And they've joined. Right. So those are people that may or may not turn into a great customer, may or may not end up being somebody on your team. But the first and foremost thing is, is they are going to start you off in your cycle. You're not going to be relying on those people. Okay. Don't, don't, please don't do that because for one, you're going to push those people away. They don't want to be hounded every day or every month by you. Just you trying to hit your own goals. Okay. You need to be creating that cycle that circle of influence right building your own customer base and the way that you're going to do that is by jumping off from that initial circle of influence right you're going to ask for referrals maybe you have somebody in that circle of influence who is going to host a party for you carry a bag party to their work take it to church when they're going to church if they're going um on vacation or a family reunion things like that right those are ways that you're going to be able to reach people that they know that you don't, okay? That's going to help increase your customer base. One way that I found that was very, very lucrative for me and really branching out in my customer base was I was going to the doctor a lot. And when I say a lot, I was going at least once or twice a month. Um, that was when I was first getting my diagnosis with endometriosis. So I was having pain. I was having to be seen all the time. I was constantly in and out of my doctor's office. And one of those trips, it finally dawned on me. And I was like, oh, I think I was wearing or carrying, either carrying a Sensi bag or wearing a Sensi shirt. And somebody at the front desk had asked me, hey, do you know somebody or do you do you Sensi? And I was like, yeah. Yeah, I sure do. Why am I not? And I thought to myself, why am I not talking to these people, right? I'm seeing them on a regular basis, for goodness sake. And so I told myself, okay, the next time I come in here, I'm going to be prepared. So what I did is when I got home, I came home and I actually took like just a little basket that I had, right? And I made up some samples of the scent of the month, attached those to the flyers that I got in my scent of the month kit. Um, I think I threw in like a room spray, a hand cream, you know, little things like that, right? And then I put some product lists, some catalogs together and some order forms business cards. Of course, I threw that in, right? Made it all into this cute little basket of a package, right? So when I had that very next doctor's appointment, 
what did I do? I took that basket in and of course I checked in like always, but instead of just walking away and sitting down, I turned around and I said, Hey, <laughs> I know you guys are seeing me on, on a regular basis right now. And they're close to my home, right? They were 10 minutes from my house. So I was like, okay, here's the deal. I, I, I sell Scentsy. I love Scentsy. Um, and I have, I've made a basket for you guys. So there's samples in here. I want you guys to just have fun with this, right? Take the sample. If, if you guys have Scentsy warmers, feel free to take home those samples. You can open them. You can smell them, right? The, they were all wax samples at the time. Um, I was like, I've got some hand cream in there. Feel free to use that. Pass it around the office so you guys can kind of get a feel for what that's like. There's a room spray in there, right? I was just kind of naming off little things. And honestly, it literally was here, you guys. If anybody wants to order, there's order for in there or my business cards there you can always contact me i'm more than happy but i tell you what i will go ahead even if i don't have an appointment when i come back out if my appointment's going to be too far out i'll make it a point to where i just come back next week pick up the basket so if anybody has orders just write them in there put them in the basket i'll be back for it that was it right and what did the girl at the counter do of course she was like oh awesome thank you right and i go and i sit down and i remember feeling so excited because i was like oh, i'm so proud of myself for stepping out of my comfort zone but for two i remember looking at the girl at the counter and i remember her like literally swinging around in her chair with the basket and then i immediately saw the basket like disappear into the back where all the nurses were right so i was like okay i think they're excited i think they like it so i went ahead finished my appointment right came out made my follow-up appointment it wasn't going to be for like a month or something the next month or whatever um and so i told found the girl that was still there at the front desk but i also was telling the checkout gal i said hey i left that scentsy basket up here and so next friday i'm going to come back up and so if anybody has orders just have them fill out the order forms that are in there if you guys have questions my numbers on everything or my email whatever's easier um, I said, but I'll swing back in next Friday. I'll pick this up. I'll go, go ahead and place the orders. And then that way I can save you guys shipping too, because I can just have it come to me and I can deliver it to you guys. Y'all, I came away from that scenario with a whole new customer base. Some of those customers I still have to this day. So I didn't let something stopped me. I looked for a way for me to spread my circle of influence. That's what I want you guys to look for, is look for ways that you can do that. Maybe it is something similar like your doctor's office, the kid's school, right? There's going to be those moments, but I want you to really utilize the people in your life. I don't want you relying on them, but I want you to ask them, Hey, do you know other people who are interested in Sensi? If I give you some business cards or some uh, product lists and some samples, would you pass those along for me? Right? I'm not asking them to buy from me every month. In fact, I hardly ever ask those people to buy from me, really, honestly. I will reach out when there's a sale. I'll let them know when we've got something big going on. But honestly, I'm not like reaching out to them. They know me. They know me, right? And I think that I do a pretty good job at making sure that everybody knows I'm a Sensi consultant now, right? On my social media, on my posts, on Instagram, everything else, right? So people kind of get the idea. So if you're doing a good job there, then you don't have to be asking people all the time, right? Do you want to buy? 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 You don't need to be asking. You need to be sharing what you're loving. That's why you will see me and you'll see others always and hear us talk about you know go live share that with box if you got the with box get it open it people love to see it right same thing when you get your regular sensi order if you have a sensi club that you get your scent and warmer of the month if you get one of those right even if it's an order that you're getting for a customer go ahead and go live or record it if you feel more comfortable doing it that way and then share it right but sharing it smelling the bar sharing what you like about the sense that is how you're going to continue to expand your circle of influence okay so you have to create your cycle you have to create your influence 
start working on that piece. And I will tell you that there's a reason to the madness here of why it's a PRV cycle, okay? So number two, work. Kind of goes without saying, right? Like I said, the business is not going to fall into your lap. You are not going to go to sleep tonight and you are not going to wake up and have 50 messages from people on Facebook saying, oh my gosh, Jackie, I want to buy $100 worth of Scentsy from you right now. I wish it was that wonderfully easy. I wish. I wish. It is not. I have to put time, effort, and energy into building relationships, into looking for opportunities, like the doctor's office example, right? Looking for those ways. Booking parties. You guys, if you are not having parties, you need to be having parties. And I don't care what a party looks like. It can be a scrolling party, a Facebook party, an Instagram party, a bingo party, an in-person party. I don't care what you do. Play Ring Around the Rosie with your friends outside. I don't know. Make it a party. Start having parties. Again, you are going to find that those people, those people who you are partying with, are going to be the ones that are going to catapult you to the people they know, right? And that is how you build that circle of influence, okay? So you have to work at it. You have to put the time, effort, energy, intention into making that work. And one of the things that I do, right? Like I work outside of the house again, okay? I have a crazy day schedule, all right? But I will tell you that there's two days every single week that I focus one of them is focusing on booking. The other is focused on building relationships. So that is when I am going back into my social media. I am answering questions. I am following up with any emails from um, job forms or anything like that that I have outstanding, right? Anybody who's contacted me via my website, all of those things, I'm following up on those things. I make time because those are income producing activities. You have to work income producing activities into your business. So whatever those systems look like for you is what you need to be doing. Number three, consistent. Do I really need to describe consistency to you at this point? Even if you're new here. Hi. Consistency is key. Consistency in working your business. Consistency in paying attention to what the heck is going on in your business, first of all. One of the ways that I do that is every single day, I'm a digital planner gal, okay? But if you are not, okay, you have your hopefully a paper planner. Maybe you use a notebook. I also use a notebook and that's what I write down all of my notes when we have meetings or training calls, things like that, it all gets written down in here, right? So my book is with me. My iPad is with me because that's how I'm digital. But when I would carry around my planner, that's what I did, I carried around my planner, okay? You need to be planning with intention every single week. I'm not telling you you have to work seven days a week, 24 hours a day. That is not what I'm saying at all. I work a busy job. I cannot work my business during the day. I'm lucky if I get a couple breaks here and there to maybe check emails, check messages, maybe answer back to some text messages. <laughs> Even that is few and far between some days, okay? Nothing happens nine times out of 10 anymore until I get home from work, all right? Or, or literally from me walking out of the locker room to the time clock. That's, a, that's when a lot of my texting is happening, not gonna lie, okay? So what I have to do is be intentional and say, okay, there's gonna be some nights where, yeah, maybe I have a little bit more time. Tuesdays, I really dedicate a lot of my evening to my Sensi business. One of the reasons I'm right here with you right now, okay? That's one of them. I also have a weekly director call that I got on every single Tuesday. And I network with other leaders who are like-minded. I need you to make a commitment to yourself. So even if you work that busy schedule, maybe you have multiple jobs outside of Sensi, okay? Even if it's only 10 minutes a day, take 10 minutes a day. One of the activities, like I said, 
Mine is digital, but it can be on paper. Start it in a notebook if that is easier for you. Use the Notes app on your phone. Use the Google Calendar. Do a free version. Use Google Calendar on your phone, right? But every single day, what I'm going to tell you to do to create a habit is to create a habit of writing down your numbers. Check your PRV every single day. Even if you know it hasn't changed, I still want you to check it and write it down or type it in, whatever, okay? Every single day, my PRV, my TWV, my GWV, even if those are not different for you yet, I want you to get into, the, it's all about creating a habit here, people. How many new team members do you have or personally enrolled consultants? I have just PEC written on mine, okay? That's what it stands for. So how many people have I personally enrolled this month so far? Every month, right? Start over at zero. Um, active frontline. That's the other thing that I track every single day. And then I write how many are in my team, how many are in my group every single day, every single day that is written down. I usually do it at the, in the evening, right before I'm going to bed is usually when I am writing that down. And then I'm kind of like looking ahead at tomorrow. What do I have on the plate? What am I, what's my focus for tomorrow? Every day of the week has a different focus. So even if I only have 10 minutes one night, at least I know where my focus needs to be. But that's how we create consistency, friends. That's how we create it. And here's the other thing that I really want to make sure that you guys understand that if, and if is probably going to happen at some point for you. It just is. Life happens, right? You get sick. Some of your, one of your family members gets sick. Um, you just, you're like, I can't right now. Whatever, whatever it is, right? Something's going to happen at some point. I've been doing this for 11 years and I can tell you that there have been points in my business where I've either fallen off the grid or I'm like, I need a mental break for like a week. I need, I need to unplug for a minute. I just, I need to reset. I need to recharge, whatever it is. When my grandson was born, he was in the NICU for six days, six days in the NICU, six days of me going from home, quick shower, getting ready, going back to the hospital, going over here, going over there, going back to the hospital again, right? That is what my days look like. And so I had very little time to touch my business. But here's the thing with consistency. When you have consistency, you have systems in place. So when you fall off, because let's be authentic and honest, it's going to happen. When you fall off, you are able to jump right back in. So if you fall off of your consistency wagon, I don't care how long it's been. I don't care if it's been a day. I don't care if it's been a week. I don't care if it's been six months and you're like, I've been completely just logged out. Jump back in. You don't have to restart your whole business all over again. You just simply jump in. You have to work. You have to put in the time. You have to put the intention behind it, okay? Number four, repeat. Sounds pretty easy, but here's the thing. Rinse and repeat. Rinse and repeat this cycle, okay? If you are creating this cycle, right? It, it looks like a circle. If you're creating the cycle, then every single time you're going to go around the circle, then every single time you're going to be reaching out to new customers. What did I tell you before? One of my systems is I give every single day of my week a different focus. Doesn't mean I'm spending hours on end working my business. Some days, maybe. On the weekends, maybe I put a little bit extra time in, right? Because I have it doesn't matter how long you're doing something. If you're doing it with intention, if you're doing it with the concept or the focus in mind of your business, it can be a good solid 10 minutes of work and you can do far more in 10 minutes that you could if you sat down and spent eight hours staring at your computer screen. Been there, done that, wrote the book. Wrote the book on it. Because when I wasn't being intentional, when I wasn't putting focus behind my actions, what happened? Nothing happened. And then I would hear myself utter the words that I'm sure either you've told yourself or you've heard over and over and over again. It's just not working for me right now. 
Okay, here's the thing. People have not stopped buying Sensi. They've not. Maybe your circle of influence has. Or maybe you need to reach beyond your circle of influence. Maybe you have to start that cycle again, right? You have to use your circle of influence as that jump off point. So that means reaching back out to that circle of influence and saying, hey, guys, I need some referrals. Do you know anybody who might be interested in Sensi? Do you know anybody who loves Disney? We've got a lot of stuff with Disney happening right now. We have a lot of stuff coming out, blah, blah, blah. Okay, all the things. Start having those conversations. Look for ways that you can have bookings and book those parties. Get them on the books. That's how you're going to meet new people, right? And you're going to start the cycle all over again. Okay, you're going to create all of that, then you're going to work hard at it, then you're going to be consistent about it, you're going to create systems and put those in place for yourself. And then you're going to repeat. Because here's the other thing that I see happen time and time and time again, and it just, it literally breaks my soul. When I see it happening. When people say, Oh, I've done all that. Okay do it again. <laughs> That's the step that I find six out of 10 consultants missing is they got all excited, started something new or started a new system or, or had a big party and it was amazing and did all the things. They didn't complete the circle. They didn't continue with the cycle, okay? You have to continue the cycle. You can't just let it stop. Because what happens after you have that party? What happens after you have those customers? You have to be doing your follow-up, right? That follow-up needs to become one of your systems. That's part of your consistency. That's part of the work aspect in it as well, right? So that becomes an income producing activity is follow-ups. If you don't put time and energy into follow-ups, Friends, you need to now pick a day, any day, and call it your follow-up day. And that is the day. And I don't care what your system looks like. I don't care if you just go to the order section of your workstation, and that's how you do it. If you write it down on index cards and you keep them with you at all times, that's how you do it. Whatever it is, just start doing it. Don't wait for somebody to tell you how to do it. Just start doing it. Because here's the thing, no action is going to leave you literally with nothing to do in your business. Nothing to do. Why? Because you're the one in control of your personal income, right? Your personal sales. You're in control of that. So if you're not doing it, nobody else is going to do it for you. So we're going to work on this cycle and you're probably going to need to sit down and brainstorm this, right? Get a blank piece of paper out and just start writing things down. Who can I connect with? How could, what is my, my, who are my circle of influence, right? Who are my 20 people that I know that I can jump from on those people, right? You have to create it. You have to start it. You have to have the starting point to work from. And again, I can't do it for you. Your sponsor can't do it for you. Your best friend can't do it for you. Only you. So if you want to know how to be consistent with PRV, how to continue getting sales every single month, yes, you're going to find tips and tricks and all the things along the way. But at the core of everything is your PRV cycle. That becomes your heartbeat, because that is what drives your business forward. That's what gives it life. That is what gives you opportunities to expand your customer base and talk to new people and keep the cycle going. I hope this has been helpful for you. I hope this has maybe opened your eyes a little bit. And maybe it's been a little bit of that hard truth that sometimes we just need to hear. But there it is. I love you all. I will talk to you soon. Bye.